So first of all, I want to start by <clears throat> saying that we like to talk about, this is a new term to me, this UXS, but we talk about unmanned systems. There's a, a variety of them. Flying drones, UAVs is a big part of that, but we're trying to expand past that. Especially in our industry, there's some environments where the prop wash really causes problems, so there's other devices that work better. And the other thing we try to help people understand, everybody wants to use a, a flying drone for everything. In some cases, it's as simple as having the right gimbal set up on a telescoping pole to get to the, the thing you need to image, right? So we always want to use the simplest tool for the job. Um, just really quickly, a lot of people have been asking about Georgia Pacific. We are a wood products company headquartered in Atlanta. We got 150 manufacturing plants. Okay, so this is just a, a flyover of a pulp mill, and then I'll show you some of the, I'm get, as I get, you look back up here, you can see these big piles of wood chips. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, here, look at all these tanks. These things have to be inspected on a fairly routine basis. These, these big towers, when I talk about um, pulp storage towers, um, that's what I'm talking about. These things are like 150 foot tall, tile lined vessels. So we're using this unmanned technology to, to do inspections. Let me get back now to my, okay. Um, okay, so. So visual inspections, um, you can read through that. We can use this for all kinds of different things that we normally would put people in place to do, in many cases in very dangerous situations. Um, we do distinguish between outdoor inspections versus indoor versus confined space, which is a specialized case of indoor, which has a lot of opportunity. Um, thermal imaging we'll talk about qu quickly. And one thing I want to just, just kind of in general, any time that we think about putting up scaffolding, using ladders or renting cranes for inspection purposes, we really should be asking ourselves, why aren't we using some sort of unmanned vehicle? And give you an idea of the value Number one, um, to, to scaffold a boiler to go do an inspection inside the boiler is about $80,000 of scaffolding. It takes about two days to erect, another day to take down, so that's three days of downtime plus the scaffolding cost. With about $4,000 and two hours, I can bring in a vendor that can give me just as good information. So it's huge. Now, the other thing, and I'll get to a image about that, or the, the other thing is just this confined space entry is really dangerous from a lot of standpoints. And I'll show you an image. Um, <clears throat> first of all, though, outdoor inspections, just an example. Instead of putting guys in the boat to go inspect our piling, we can easily do it with a drone. The, the right top vi image is banding on a smokestack. Normally, we'd have to put a guy on a rope, you know, rappelling down the side of that stack to do the inspections. Within five minutes, we can do a good inspection with the flying drone. This one's a great example. We've got these um, fire suppression systems up on the roof of one of our wood product facilities. Normally, you'd have a guy walking around on the roof just to see if the gauge is in the right zone. So our pilot there has set up waypoint flights. We can't go fully autonomous yet because of FAA re restrictions, but just hit the button. It'll go take a picture of each of those gauges, and then we have the information we need. And then this last one, this is in one of our clarifiers. Um, if you can see this erosion here, or this um, where the metal is worn away, the only way we would have gotten to see that otherwise is again putting guys in a boat in a clarifier in a dangerous situation. So just a few of and we have hundreds of examples examples like this. When we go into confined spaces, we will use sometimes something like a Mavic. You guys, you guys all know the Mavic. We consider that a disposable drone. We'll go to get one inspection. We might tear up three of these, but you know, lose three thousand dollars. But but the value we get if we if that replaces eighty thousand dollars in scaffolding, it's it's something we're willing to do. The Elios, um, this cage drone, is our workhorse right now for confined space inspe inspections. Um, it's a great tool. I think it's going to be superseded soon with new technology. Hopefully, some of you guys can help develop. Um, but again, I mentioned that there's some spaces where we can't go with flying drones. Mostly, it's just dust that the props kick up and you lose all visibility. So we're working with companies that develop. This is a crawling snake. It's got cameras on five sides, cameras and lights. Um, it's got magnetic crawling capability. It's got um, um, ultrasonic thickness testing built into it. 
And this thing you can drive into any tight little space, even like a six inch pipe you can go into with that. And then walking drones, we're looking at the company that's developing that, we're partnering with them. You can carry a lot more payload, go for a lot longer. So here's some images. This is inside one of those stock towers I talked about. We have to inspect these tiles. Again, we can, we can get in there with a drone, go do a good inspection. We've actually had people in the past die going to these tanks because when they go in, if there's some dry stock in the roof and it falls, hits them, they're dead, right? So if we can go in without ever even breaking the plane, um, we can get in there quicker, we can do just as good an inspection. This is an example in a boiler of um, what that material is. This is a recovery boiler, that's salt cake. That's about 250 pounds worth, it's like rock. Um, they call it a clinker, the other term is widow maker. And again, we've had people die because these things fall on them. So to be able to go in and find that with the drone without putting the person in there, we're saving lives. W one of our vendors was flying a boiler, I wasn't there, but um, he said a chunk of something like this hit his drone, ruined the drone, but he said if it would have been a person, they would have been dead. So, so the, the cost savings is huge, but it's nothing compared to the, the value of um, not putting people in harm's way. And this is just an image of that Elios popping in the manhole. Again, we can do a full inspection without ever breaking the plane of the, of the vessel. The other thing we do is we use this for measurements, material volume, landfill volume, do bathymetry, expedited sur surveying, gas detection, temperature particulate, etc. cetera. Um, some examples, so for volumetrics, this is huge. Um, the, the upper right one is just a log pile. All we got to do is fly by that, and there's very basic software that'll count the logs, give us an average diameter. Um, we know for that species what the average kind of conical shape of the logs are, so we've got a volume. Um, this, this on the bottom right, we just did as a proof of concept to kind of test this technology. We know the volume of this tank, so we used the photogrammetry and the calculation to verify that it was giving us good numbers. And for us, the alternative method, what we've been doing for years to measure these piles, these are gypsum rock that we make wallboard from. We'll fly an airplane over and take one picture and kind of make an estimate. Or we put survey crews up there, which is really dangerous, right? It's not a good place to be. And so it's quicker, it's safer, and it gives us much better information. Um, like I said, it's not just flying drones. We use these drone boats now to do bathymetric um, surveys of our lagoons. So we have to dredge our lagoons fairly routinely, and this helps us plan uh, where we need to get in the dredge. It makes that process much more efficient. This is a this is this actually was collected from a flying drone with lidar. The river was shallow enough that the lidar penetrated to the substrate and we were able to get a good. Um, image of the bottom of that. And then this, this other one, as we, as we take this boat around, and we can, we, can fly, or we can drive this just like a flying drone off GPS, you can turn it over to computer control, it'll just do its path. We can also drag along a probe set that can measure pH, conductivity, dissolved oxygen, all kinds of parameters. And this is one example of temperature. And what's interesting here is this curtain, which is supposed to force all the water around here for optimum uh, aeration. You can see where there, just from the temperature profile that there's a little bit of a, a short circuiting going on there. So again, valuable information for us in the operation. There, there'd be no way to know that otherwise. Thermal imaging is hugely valuable to us. And then um, there's some other things. We've learned that we can use that Elios cage drone works really well to we just use a prop wash to knock dust off of cable trays and pipe runs, as opposed to having to put a person up in a basket with a compressed air hose to do the same thing. Um, we can deliver, we haven't done this yet, but there's no reason why you can't use it to deliver emergency supplies across. We have some really big facilities. But tool delivery, think about that. We got a mechanic that has to go out, see what the problem is. He's got to get back in his cart, drive a mile back to the other side of the mill to get his tools we're thinking that we can help expedite that process and get the process up running, which, which um, you know, means money, right? We have a number of sites that have um, endangered birds that are nesting, and we have obligations to check to see what the eggs are in there. I'm, I don't know anything about it, but I know that drones are our preferred method now for doing that. And then uh, 
photogrammetry, you guys all know about that. What, what I'm excited about is using that to, um, to, get to develop this digital twin or BIM type images and convert those to, I don't, you know, with the drone, I don't know that we'll get to engineering drawing uh, precision for, for um, BIM, but for uh, process flow diagrams and things like that, we can easily generate some nice three-dimensional Im images. Um, and then we also we see big value when we have these vendors come in to fly for us We'll have them do a fly over the whole mill like the one I showed you earlier And that's good for their you know in the lobby of the mill when visitors come they have their plane in the background. It's good promotion stuff. Um, Some photogrammetry You guys are all familiar with that and the value this helps if nothing else it helps our operations guys if just have an image and they can obviously walk through that on the computer and see it from all angles and if they're trying to fit a new piece of equipment into a space it gives them a better representation of, of what they're dealing with. Um, I'm not going to talk about how we implemented our, our drone program but I just want to say that um, we see huge value in this but at the same time there's a lot of risk so we've been very careful about how we, we've done this and I'll give you an example. One time we were flying a boiler and we wanted to do the ductwork between the boiler and the precipitator. But we, I always ask the guys, what's the worst thing that can happen? They said, if the drone goes past this apex in the ductwork and you lose control and it rolls into the precipitator, the mill's down for one extra day, that's a million dollars lost. So one little thing and we're out a million bucks. So we really want to be careful about not doing that to the mill and, and that could take our whole program back as well so being very careful we're working with um, we're working mostly with experienced vendors and our best vendors are those that actually are first and foremost kind of NDE NDT um, rope access type guys that that have spend their lives in our in our equipment but also fly drones so they know what they're looking at when they're in there and that really helps um, we're starting to build out our in-house team. Ultimately, we're going to have in-house pilots doing routine stuff, and we'll always use specialists for the, for the more, more complicated. Um, vision of future opportunities. I think we all know autonomy is, is coming quick, right? We already are doing uh, volume. We're, we're testing. You guys know Kespri. Kespri um, has a basically an autonomous uh, volumetric um, offering. Um, and um, but I mean all these things what what I see is a vision of the future so I showed you that Elios drone that that we can pop into the to a boiler to do an inspection we still got somebody joystick in that and most of these spaces have a lot of draft so it's tough and when you only have 12 minute battery time we the guy after about five minutes has already wanted to come out because sometimes it takes him a few minutes to get back out of the hole um, so what I envision is uh, fully autonomous inspection drone that you push a button, it finds its way through the manhole, goes through with LIDAR, maps the entire space, identifies what it needs to look at and starts grabbing imagery. And um, ideally, I think I see that as being, if there's nothing in, inside that get in the way, I see that being a tethered system so that it can go for hours at a time instead of 10 minutes at a time. Um, um, again, I think we all know that the drones are a fairly simple tool compared to, I think, the real opportunities around what we do with the data. Um, and we're doing a lot around AI, machine learning, and working with Honeywell on, on some of this stuff as well. And then payload development, um, non-structured non testing. These are, this is a company we're working with that has a, a ultrasonic head mounted on a drone and we're going to test them pretty soon here to see how it compares to our own measurements. Think about that. You either have to be up in a man basket or scaffold that to get the same results. Um, the same company, they started with a spray paint drone. So they have a tethered drone with a tube and they'll spray paint ship hulls with this drone, right? So we asked them, can you spray foam insulation? And they're going to figure a solution. Um, and what that means for us to to spray foam insulation on one of our um, continuous digesters is a $200,000 scaffolding job. So if they can do that with a, a flying drone and spray it where we want it, you save, save all that money and don't put people up in that space. 
that the right image is a, a Caspery, which does this autonomous volumetric. So Shalindra asked me to kind of challenge the group on what we think you should be working on. I think autonomous, and I, I talked about my idea of a fully autonomous confined space. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. I know the industry seems to be focused a lot on outdoor stuff. There's really a lot of opportunity. I don't know if you guys, anybody here from gas, uh, oil and gas? I know Exxon said that they plan by 2020 not to ever put a person in confined space again. They plan to do everything with, with unmanned vehicles. And we're having that same. Um, yeah, just routine inspections. We lose, so when a conveyor bearing, we got these big long conveyors. When the bearing goes and the, the roll freezes, you don't even know it until you start seeing a big hole in your belt because it's dragging on it. I can see us month or weekly or daily just have that drone go off on its own with a thermal camera, look at every bearing and see if any of them are getting hot and, and just give them an alert, right? Perimeter security, I see I see one of these dogs just walking our fence line with cameras and thermal sensors and um, trucks, you know, every time we pull a truck into one of our loading docks and we do thousands and thousands of these a day, some person has to go walk around that truck to inspect it in a very dangerous place and people have died in our facilities because they got run over in, in those truck yards. If we can have some some you know autonomous unmanned vehicle do that for us, why not, right? And then past development. One of the things in these tile test or chests that I, that I showed you an image of, sometimes you do have to, I know my time's up, I'll finish up here quickly. Sometimes you have to put scaffolding up because you have to go and tap each tile listening for hollow spots. Somebody's actually developing a sonic system where the drone would go up to each tile, give it a, a, a sound, and then record the, the echo and tell you if there's a, a dead spot behind it. That's it. <laughs>